I thought I'd take a stab and tell you about what you do um, when you get a plasmid that comes as one of these agar stabs. So we'll go over the details, but the basic idea is that you get this um, bacteria and it's kind of like growing in this agar form. Then what you're going to do is you're going to plate it. You're going to streak it on a plate and try to get individual colonies. You're going to take one of these colonies and you're going to grow it up overnight in a like a 5 mil LB culture. And remember your antibiotics. Then what you're going to do is before you go to mini prep it, so you can mini prep it, you basically break open the cells and you get the plasmid out. Before you do that, you actually want to save some of those cells. So take the little portion, make a glycerol stock. This is going to allow you to have a stock of the plasmid already in the cells so you don't have to transform them in the future. Now you can then take the rest of it, do a mini prep, get that plasmid, send it for sequencing, do any sort of subcloning you need to do, maybe transform it into expression cells, various things like that. Okay, that was the whirlwind tour, but don't worry, we'll back up and go over a little bit in detail now. So I was really confused when I heard the term like, wait, you're ordering a staff? What does that even mean? But basically what they do is they take a pipette um, that they take a bacterial colony, um, so bacteria that have the plasmid that you order in it, and then they stab it into the agar gel and the bacteria are going to like grow around the, um, around it. So you might be used to like agar plates where you can um, see like the things grow as colonies and stuff. Here you're gonna have the bacteria kind of growing in this little indentation. What you're gonna then do is you need to isolate the bacteria that these bacteria that have your plasmid, which you can do by plating them. And then you want to isolate the plasmid out of that bacteria, which you can do by doing an overnight culture and then doing a mini prep. Now, once you get that plasmid, you're going to want to send it to sequ for sequencing so that you actually make sure it's the right plasmid. Trust me, I have gotten sent the wrong plasmid. It was a totally different gene, so you always want to check. Um, and also so that you can know the sequence. So a lot of times when you order a plasmid, you don't know the entire sequence um, or that sort of thing. And if you're wanting to, especially if you're wanting to subclone it, so like take it out of that plasmid and stick it into another plasmid, maybe it comes in one of those like generic plasmids that you often order like cDNAs from, so complementary DNA, so DNA that's complementary to the mRNA instructions for making a protein. So basically this is like the edited version of a gene. It's got the introns and everything removed. So it makes it really, it's like ready to make protein from, except that it's put in this like generic cloning plasmid and you need to put it into a plasmid that's good for expressing things and so much more on that in other posts but you need to know the sequence in order to know how to clone it um so they might tell you like what restriction sites there are and stuff but if you want to do a pcr based method you're going to want to know that sequence especially if you're going to do any sort of mutagenesis in the future you want to know the sequence and make sure that the sequence is what you think it is too if you think you know the sequence so when you do this, um, basically in the olden days, um, just a few years ago, what we typically do is we do Singer sequencing, um, and we would put, tell them what primers to use, and then you could use primers that would go like into your insert and that sort of thing. Um, but nowadays, it's basically the same price or cheaper to get the whole plasmid sequence. So you don't even have to add primers. Um, they do this like long read sequencing. Um, we stick it in the mail and overnight the next day we get our results. So it's really great, um, especially when you have the whole plasmid that you want to sequence, like in this case. So you can get that um, plasmid 2 sequence out of the mini prep. Um, and so the mini prep is basically it's alkaline lysis. It's when you take the it's like when you take your tube from your overnight culture um, and then you are going to basically break open the cells and get that plasmid out. This process um, is basically what we do is we're going to spin down the cells and we resuspend them and we break them open and stuff. Before you spin down the cells, what you're going to want to do is um, take like 500 microliters or so. So I do like a 5 mil overnight growth. Then I can take 500 microliters, mix it with 500 microliters of 50% sterile glycerol. Um, so you can sterilize it. I like to filter sterilize. You can also autoclave it. Just make sure you don't like autoclave it for, any, for too long or else it's gonna like caramelize and it'll get all um, like brownie and stuff. Um, it smells nice though. But so um, yeah, filter sterilizing. I have more in a post on this than the other in, um, in another post. But so you can then take that and just like, so mix with the glycerol, um, you wanna do it in one of these cryo vials um, and you can add it um, 
one of those ones with like the spin top that are really good for being in the minus 80 and they're not gonna crack open and stuff. Um, just invert it um, to mix it throughout. The glycerol is going to help protect the bacteria, um, provide some like osmotic balance and stuff so that the bacteria aren't just gonna like break open. Um, and then the great thing about this is that you have the bacteria in the cells already. Um, so when you want to go say, make more of, um, plate it again, maybe do something, um, grow up more of these cells for some reason, you need more of the mini prep, blah, blah, blah. You could just take that mini prep, take the plasma that you purified, transform it into new some cells and do this all again, or you can skip the transformation step because you already have some of it in cells um, stored in your glycerol stock. So you can just take that glycerol stock out of the minus 80, um, stick it on some ice, scrape off a little bit of the top um, and plate it. So you want, don't want to let the whole thing thaw or anything. You just need the top to get enough that you can like scrape it off um, and plate it. So your stab will be good for a couple weeks. Um, so you want to do it within a couple weeks. Um, if it's not a plate, um, that'll be good for about a month. Um, if you want the cells with the plasmid in them for a longer term, then you're going to want to do the glycerol stock, which will be good for years and years and years. Um, so the plasmid itself, like once you purify it with your mini prep, that should be good in the freezer for years as well. Um, I mean, not as long as a glycerol stock, but a pretty long time. Um, it's pretty stable as long as you're not like doing anything weird to it. Um, but that plasmid doesn't have any any way to make more copies of it. So if you want more copies of it, you'd have to then transform it into the cells that you took it, like the cells that you took it out of. So having a glycerol stock of the cells where they're already in the cells allows you to skip that transformation step and just play that straight ahead. Once your sequencing comes in, you can then do any sort of subcloning that you want to do, um, cloning it into different plasmids and that sort of thing. You can also um, transform the cells into expression cells, um, transform the plasmid into expression cells. So say you get a plasmid and it comes in one of those generic cloning plasmids. Well, then you're gonna have to subclone it into an expression plasmid. But sometimes you order a plasmid and it's already in one of those expression plasmids, but you just need to put it into expression cells. So for example, I ordered this gene for T7 RNA polymerase, um, which is going to allow you make, to make RNA copies of DNA. So you can buy the commercial made like enzyme um, from NEV or whatever, um, but you can also purify it yourself um, and you can get like higher yields, concentrations, more active, a bunch of cool stuff like that. Um, so I'm purifying myself. And P.S. Thank you to Anna Pyle's lab um, for depositing this plasmid in Adgene um, so that people like me um, can go and use it. So I'm looking forward to in vitro transcribing. Um, so I ordered the plasmid from Adgene and then the plasmid comes and what I did was I streaked it out on a plate. Now I'm really bad at streaking things out on a plate. Um, so the purpose of streaking it out on the plate um, is you take it from here and then you want to isolate like individual colonies. And so individual colonies are like when a bacteria settles down and then it grows on top of itself and you get this like loopy dot. So what you're supposed to do um, when you get one of these plasmids is you take a sterile toothpick or an inoculating loop or a pipette tip and you want to dip it in the top of that little like indentation. And then what you do is you like streak it. So in the picture, I show you what like Adjun recommends how you streak them. Um, I'm really bad at streaking them as you can tell, but basically you want to like go and you do like a squiggle, then you take another uh, toothpick or whatever, and then you do, you go through one of the first lines and you squiggle and then you do squiggle. The basic purpose is that you're trying to isolate individual colonies as opposed to just a smear. So I have mostly just a smear, um, but you want to get individual colonies uh, preferably. Um, so here I got a little better. Um, it, I don't know if you can see that. It's a little better with that one. Um, but then you take one of those colonies and you grow up in your mini prep um, and or your overnight culture and just like LB. And for both the plate and the LB, make sure you're adding the appropriate antibiotic, which you can find when you order the plasmid. It'll be on the plasmid information sheet. Um, and so I'm going to take 500 microliters, make glycerol stock, um, and then spin the rest down and mini prep them send them for sequencing um, and also because I kind of I um, I'm guessing that this one will be okay and I don't need to subclone it or anything um, so I'll probably go ahead and take that purified plasmid and also transform it into BL21 cells which are good for expressing protein into the lac promoter so basically I can induce it with IPTG um, or auto induction and 
basically to do this, I need cells that are capable of doing that, um, such as these BL21 cells. And so then as long as the sequencing comes back and stuff, I can go ahead and express the protein and then purify it. Um, for some of the other ones I ordered, I'm gonna have to do some subcloning and stuff. So that sequencing is gonna be really important. Oh, and if the plasmid comes just like in plasmid form, um, then you can, instead of taking it like from a stab, you're gonna have to transform it into cells. So transform it into typically like a cloning cell like DH5 alpha, which is typically what these things come in. Um, th these sort of DH5 alpha cells are really good um, for transformation, for just making lots of copies of the plasmid and keeping their integrity good. So not making, doing a combination or anything like that that's gonna mess up your sequence.